Well, it seems you people really like weird information, so I'll tell you a tale. One day I called up my friend who was an actual physicist, and I said, blank, because I... I'm not supposed to tell people his name because he's a weird guy. He said, do you know people think the earth is flat? And the first thing he said to me was, well, I can't prove it's flat. And I said, what are you talking about? You're a physicist. And I was like, there's pictures of it. And he said, no, every picture from NASA is photo stitched. And I was like, what are you talking about? We have satellite photos. And he was like, do you know about a minute arc angle? And I said, of course not, because I'm not a physicist, blank. And he was like, that's how wide a camera can take a photo, and at 230 miles up, which our satellites are, you could maybe get Nevada. So every single photograph of the Earth is photo stitched, and then you can go to the NASA website, and it's true. So this is a lesson on the difference between knowing and believing. We all believe the Earth is round. You cannot know it is round. And uh, you can go ahead and argue all you want. I'm sure a bunch of people are going to be like, Oh, but I know this and I know that. But unless you're in outer space staring at it, it's really hard to tell. I mean, even a physicist admitted, like, it's hard. And this also leads into cognitive dissonance. If this triggers you, you suffer from cognitive dissonance. And this was one of the lessons Steve taught me. He was like, look, you need to watch a bunch of those Flat Earth documentaries and understand that, uh, you know, try to convince yourself, or let yourself try to be convinced of it. Because uh, if you think you know things and you really believe them, you're lost to stay the same person you are. You have no chance of ever growing. So, do with that what you want. But it was mind to me. Yeah. This is a clip that blew my mind when I seen it, man. These people, man, would try to make you believe anything. They always say, the moon is out of space. The sun is out of space. Look at this clip, collector. These people are flying a plane over the sun, man. They giving the thumbs up and they smiling and happy because you've been lied to, man. You've been lied to your whole life, collective. Space is not what you think it is, man. These people are actually riding across the sun. Look at that, man. The sun is in the clouds, man. Look at that. But it's supposed to be out of space, right? Stop falling for anything, man. It's time to rise your vibration up, man, and, and do your own research for once in your life, man. Stop listening to people, man. This is proof. Look at that. The sun is actually right there. You know what I'm saying? Stop falling for everything, collect. Hey, Globe Earthers. Oh, I'm going to keep addressing you idiots. Oh, man. So... NASA was established in 1958. First test, Von and Von Bonn did the V2 missile and shot it up and got to 100,000 feet. That was in 1947. And NASA came in 1958. So why did Operation Fish Bowl, or should I say Operation Dome, or should I say Operation Firmament, why did that come about? Oh, and it tells you right here in the description what they were doing. A couple of, along with a couple of pictures of them shooting up 1.4 megatons of TNT. It says number of tests, 11. And yet they couldn't crack the dome. <laughs> you even had the Simpsons make a little skit 
of the baseball cracking the dome and the water flooding in. You had Hillary Clinton say, we might not crack the glass ceiling, but we got a million cracks in it. I mean, we might not shatter the glass ceiling, but we got a million cracks in it. Hmm. It's little subtle things like that. See, it's not. Hey, hey Globe Arthur, listen to this. It's not one piece of evidence that approve the earth is flat. It's hundreds of thousands of little bitty little tests and things that we find and do that debunks your stupid shit. That proves somebody is lying about something somewhere. And the majority of it leans in the favor of flat earth. See, maybe if y'all didn't have a shit ton of CGI and you can actually use real images to prove what you're talking about. Maybe if you had experiments like a ball holding 70 percent of water while spinning, spinning with landmass on it, maybe somebody will believe you. But you have at the the V2 couldn't go no higher than. 100,000 feet so high they said it went to space i.e. Varnon von Braun the god of the space age created space worked with NASA created NASA in 1958 and now all y'all do is send rockets up in the sky and lie about your space travel 1962 why is it people preach Bible this and Bible that, but as soon as you bring up the firmament and flat earth, oh, no, 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 you're crazy, you're wrong. Shit don't make sense. You know, people like to say, um, these are exciting times to be alive, or what amazing times to be living in. I don't feel that at all. This is embarrassing, and it's aggravating. See, if I was given the option to be born 40 or 50 years before the year I was born and be 100 or dead, I would choose that in a heartbeat. You know, in the last couple of years, like, there's been more lies exposed. You know, like, the ones they've been telling us our whole life that have been exposed. It's, it's mind-blowing. And now, they're obviously creating a society where... They want, they do nothing but lie to us. They expect us to hurry up and believe the lies, hurry up and sign up for the lies. And if you don't believe their lies, they want you dead. There's a scene in the Matrix where Morpheus tells Neo, this is your last chance. After this, there's no turning back. You take the blue pill, the story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill, you stay in Wonderland, and I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Remember, all I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. Never has it become more apparent to me than it is now, how we can be standing next to another person and be existing in two completely alternate realities. I think there are two diametrically opposed perceptions of reality, existing in the same place. One is primarily influenced by the government, media, pharmaceutical propaganda, and the trusted experts that are hand-selected by these governing entities. The other is primarily influenced by lived experiences, intuition, logic that's consistent and coherent, and observations. You see, when people do their research before they purchase property or buy a product or a car, they would be called smart consumer. But when you start doing research of your own, instead of blindly trusting the experts, you will most likely be called a conspiracy theorist. Plato said this, those who are able to see beyond the shadows and the lies of their culture will never be understood, let alone believed by the masses. On the bright side, there's about half the country who has at least one conspiracy theorist friend who is now appearing a lot less crazier than they were about a year or two ago. Are you going to keep an experiment your you can do of yourself? And experience so people and laugh about the, the title agenda? Flat Earth. I don't claim myself to be a flat earther, but I can tell you as a knowing, we do not live on a spinning globe. And one of the proofs is how far we can see with our eyes. 
on average, humans can see around 3.1 miles. So if I was to say to you a human could see 10 miles, you'd think that's impossible, right? What about 100 miles with their own naked eye? Impossible. What about 1,000 miles? What about a million miles? Well, you're told that the sun, that amazing soul in the sky, is 93 million miles away. If we can only see for three miles, how could we see that at 93 million miles away? And if you could see it at 93 million miles away, how is there a strip in the ocean just there? 93 million miles away, do you really believe you could see that with your eyes? And if your answer is yes, which is stupid, then how big's the sun? Search it on Google. 432 million miles wide. First of all, do you really believe that you could see 93 million miles away? Do you really think there'd just be a little spot on the ocean just like that? Do you really think that that's 432 million miles long? And if you still think that is correct, what device have they used to measure that distance? Please show me that one first and how they made that uh, uh, measurement. It's all a load of nonsense, but that's what you believe in. So you laugh at me for saying flat earth when I don't actually say that, but yet you believe that that's 93 million miles away. You believe that you live on a spinning globe at 1,000 miles an hour whilst traveling around the sun at 66.6 thousand miles an hour whilst our galaxy is shooting through space at 500,000 miles an hour. Not possible, impossible. And you believe in that and you laugh at me. Come on guys, use your senses, your five senses, the human experience. My eyes see that that's close. My eyes see that that uh, sun spot in the ocean has to be close. If it's 432 million miles wide, that whole ocean would be lit up. It's nonsense. Come on, use your logic, people. Let go of what you think's right, because we've been conditioned into a massive light our whole life, the education system. They teach our kids, they brainwash our kids into this fake narrative. And this is our foundations. Where we are born and what we're supposed to be here for has been taken away from us. And then with our senses, we then doubt them because we're told that that sun that we see rise up in the sky, go across the sky and then set, it's not actually moving. We're told that we're spinning at a thousand miles an hour whilst that's still. Again, trust your senses, not the government. Everything we've been taught is a lie. And that brings me to the space and cosmos, one of the greatest deceptions, and yet given to us by NASA themselves. Article after article after article after press release and press release about water in space in amounts that are completely mind-blowing. Ocean worlds, water in the solar system and beyond. 2009, NASA found a sprawling cloud of cold water vapor around a solar system at a nearby star. The water vapor could eventually deliver oceans to dry planets that are forming in the system. The famous Eye of God nebula actually weeping tears of water. Stars and galaxies are born in a nebula. Can you imagine the size of the water that's coming out of a nebula? It's like one drop of that would engulf our entire solar system. Now, oceans detected in, inside Saturn's moon and stars found shooting water bullets. NASA confirms best ever evidence water on Mars. Water from Orion. Now there's water coming out of the constellation of Orion. A star shooting water bullets. A star is supposed to be a sun. There's water on a star. And they do a study, NASA, and they say basically all stars have water. This is the conclusion. Stanford University tells us that there's water on the sun. Waterloo University tells us that there's water on the sun. On the left is one of those deep space images of the universe. On the right is a picture of a swimming pool. Also keep in mind that many of the images that we get shown by NASA come from radio telescopes, not from optical telescopes that actually photograph an object. Our very own solar system is completely surrounded by water. They tell us it's ice, but can we believe them? Well, we call it the Kuiper Belt. It's a belt in a disk. That whole thing is now completely engulfed by more water called the Oort cloud that completely engulfs our entire solar system. It looks something like that. And yet, there's supposed to be vacuum in space? Where does the water go? Where does the vacuum begin or end? And suddenly, our, the Bible makes a lot more sense to me. And God said, let there be light. So the Spirit of God is moving across the waters and it's the sound of the Creator that makes the light 
How does that work? Well, in modern science, it's known as sonoluminescence. When you put a sound frequency into a body of water, after a little while, a beautiful bubble appears filled with light. Where does the watery space begin? Where is the edge? Well, if we start listening to what the Bible tells us in some ancient scriptures, maybe we should listen to all of it. It says, God placed the firmament in the sky to separate the waters of the heavens from the waters below. And then how did God create the flood? It, says, it tells us that God opened the gates of heaven to let the water pour in on the earth. <laughs> never known that. Are you done? All right, guys. Check this one out. Globes are not meant for educational purpose, but only decorative purpose. <laughs> okay, so if there is no dome and we don't live on a flat earth, someone please explain what the heck this is. Мы сейчас гуляем, идем пешую прогулку делаем. Что-то вот такое фигня.